Luigi's Mansion is being remade for the Nintendo 3DS. And based off the trailer, it looks like, well, Luigi's Mansion. So, I guess that means we're done here. Yeah, pack it up, analysis machine, there's nothing to cover here. Okay, I'm just kidding. Of course there's some new stuff to talk about here. So let's get right to it, shall we? But to start things off, I want to drive home the point that this is very much the same game based on the trailer. Because, as you may have already seen, I was able to almost perfectly recreate the trailer in the original game for our head-to-head -head comparison. Which you should totally check out, by the way, if you haven't already. And based off of that, the mansion layout not only appears to be identical, but enemy ghosts seem to appear in the exact same spots, and even the amount of money that appears in opening cupboards appears to be the same. Heck, we can even just barely see Toad exactly where we'd expect to find him in the foyer once the lights come back on, which suggests even the save system works the same, where you talk to Toad to save your game. So in an overall design sense, it doesn't seem much of anything has changed at all. But things start to look a little bit different when we take a look at what it'll be like to actually play the game, because the 3DS's hardware, by its very nature, dictates that some changes had to be made. First up are the dual screens, which now allows persistent access to the Game Boy Horror on the touchscreen. Look, the branding is still there too. Sweet! Luigi even still carries it around in his hand constantly whenever he's not using the Poltergust. Hey Luigi, that's super old technology, man. Someone should really get him a Switch or something. Anyways, like in the original game, the Game Boy Horror is where you'll find all the game's menus, such as the map, as represented by the mansion icon, as well as items symbolized by the coin, and finally captured ghosts, as indicated by, yeah, the ghost. And since the Game Boy Horror is displayed at all times on the touchscreen, the map can now track Luigi in real time, using his classic 2D sprite to represent his exact location. Otherwise, it seems to function almost exactly as it did before, showing which doors are locked, as well as which rooms you've explored or haven't. Even the color coding appears to be the same, with dark gray representing locked rooms, while the brightly colored ones mark which ones you've cleared of ghosts, with a specific color representing which segment of the game that room is from. So the yellow here represents the first area, and blue is the second. Now interestingly, while the map in the original game was fully 3D and isometric, this one appears to be top-down and 2D, making it unlikely that you'll be able to swivel the camera as you could in the original game. But you can still toggle between floors using the touchscreen arrows on the left, as well as zooming in and out with the magnifying glass on the right. The boo counter has also been moved off the main screen and onto the top left of the Game Boy Horror, although the boo tracker itself, which lights up whenever a boo is nearby, still remains on the main screen. Furthermore, it appears that the game will no longer display the name of whichever room you enter on the main display, based on this scene where it doesn't appear, whereas in the GameCube version it did. Which does make sense, seeing as the title is already displayed persistently on the map screen. Moving on, it appears as if the controls have seen some tweaks as well. Probably because they had to. Because the original Luigi's Mansion is built around having two control sticks. One to move, and the other to aim the Poltergust. Which wouldn't quite work on the 3DS since the original versions of the system only had a single circle pad. So to compensate, it looks like the game is using a solution similar to the 3DS sequel, Dark Moon, where Luigi's movement and aiming are fused together. Which means that, once you begin to use a Poltergust, you're locked to whatever direction Luigi was facing. Which we can see demonstrated in this scene, where Luigi uses a flamethrower without turning at all. This also suggests that you won't be able to strafe at all while using the flashlight. Unless there's a dedicated strafe button that we don't see used in the trailer. However, as in Dark Moon, Luigi can still at least aim up and down, presumably with the X and B buttons like before. Or alternatively, by tilting the system with motion controls. Which we know are back from Dark Moon based on this icon that appears when Luigi's using the Poltergust in a few scenes. Although, since the icon doesn't appear in every scene where he's using the Poltergust, this could mean that there's now an option to disable them entirely. So ultimately, Luigi does seem to be a little bit less dexterous compared to the original game. But that also means that capturing ghosts should be a bit simpler, since you no longer have to worry about reeling them in with two separate control sticks. Now with all that being said, it is still technically possible that the game might have a dual control stick option for the 3DS's that support it. But if that is the case, they haven't shown it off yet. Now there is one more thing that the GameCube controller has that the 3DS doesn't. Analog triggers, which in the original game allowed you to precisely control the amount of suction power or how much water, fire, and ice that you expelled. So this would have to be changed for the 3DS. But since, practically speaking, moderating how much suction power you used barely mattered in the original game, it appears that Luigi will likely just now default to full power constantly, since we never see anything less being used in the trailer. But what about the projectile elements that Luigi could shoot with a full press of the trigger in the original game? Well, our guess would be is that that function might be moved to a different button entirely, like the L trigger maybe. Alright, and that pretty much covers it for the gameplay, so let's get to the thing you're probably most curious about. The graphics. Especially because, as a launch title, the original Luigi's Mansion is a bit of a tour de force showing off the GameCube's capabilities. Now we've already made a full head-to-head -head video comparing the two games side by side, but this time I want to dive in even deeper and point out some of the specific differences you might have missed. 
But before we continue, I do want to make it clear that Luigi's Mansion 3DS is still in development, and things could change and look better in the final version of the game. So perhaps the biggest difference is that our main man here, Luigi, has had a bit of a facelift, in that he now has an entirely different character model based on his Dark Moon appearance. Which kind of makes sense, seeing as the original game was essentially his first modern appearance in 3D, even if I always define that model charming in its own right. And as part of this, Luigi's animations seem to have been pretty faithfully translated to the new model, with the biggest changes being in his walking animations, as he no longer walks belatedly. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the 3DS is fundamentally a very different system from the GameCube, and that manifests itself in all kinds of ways, such as the substantially lower resolution, which obviously means the game isn't nearly as sharp as it was before. But it should be noted that it'll probably look better on an actual 3DS than it does here, and it's likely because of that screen that the 3DS game has a slightly brighter overall look with most dark rooms not being quite as dark as they were before, which again might be less evident on an actual system. But there are some perks too, such as the 3DS's wider screen, as you now have a noticeably wider field of view. Take this scene for example. On the 3DS, you can see the entire portrait hanging on the wall to the right, whereas on the GameCube, it's entirely cut off. And it might be because of that wider view that a few additional trees are planted outside the mansion, which now better frames the manor itself, making it look even creepier and more menacing. In fact, this entire outside section might be the most different of any area we can see in the trailer. The gate Luigi passes through, for instance, has been given a more menacing makeover, now featuring an arch design with a spiky top, as opposed to the relatively flat and almost inviting circular design of the original. In addition, the tombstones have been slightly rearranged, and the blue torches on either side of the gate have seen a size increase and now have a cool lens flare effect. The wagon ahead has also been rotated so the side is facing the camera instead of the back. And then there's a completely redesigned textures, with the path now looking much more dirt-like. And that's just a sign of things to come, as it seems like a ton of the textures have been reworked for the game. Oh, and check out those sweet lightning effects! Not only are they purple now instead of white, but they brilliantly light up the immediate surrounding area, whereas the GameCube's lightning was a bit flatter, lighting up the entire area instead. Overall, the outside portion of the mansion seems to be a marked improvement over the original game. But it's when we venture inside that things get a bit dicier. Take Luigi's flashlight for example, which now looks significantly less realistic. In the GameCube version, the beam of light shined brighter at the source, with the light rays radiating outward in a realistic fashion. Whereas on the 3DS, it just looks like two yellow cones layered on top of each other. Oh, and do you remember the dust particles that could be seen floating around when illuminated by the flashlight in the original game? Well, they appear to be completely missing in the 3DS version, which isn't terribly shocking as they were missing in Dark Moon as well. And speaking of dust, Luigi would kick up entire dust clouds wherever he went in the original game, whereas this effect seems to be greatly reduced in the 3DS version, to the point that we almost thought it was gone entirely. The chandelier that drops, for instance, used to kick up a ton of dirt on the GameCube, whereas none appears in the remake. The ghosts, too, have lost some of their ethereal beauty. In the original game, they were highly translucent, as in see-through, while also having a really neat bloom-like glow. And not only does that glow appear to be completely missing in the 3DS version, but the ghosts also seem much less transparent, nearly opaque at times. Take these two, for instance. In the GameCube version, you can quite clearly see the wall through them, but on the 3DS, only the light of the nearby candle shines through. In another example, we can easily see the piano visible through the woman here on the GameCube whereas I can't quite say the same for the 3DS. Ultimately, the ghosts look truly otherworldly on the GameCube, whereas now they look more like clay figures. But it's not all bad news. The dancing ghosts, for instance, now light up the dance floor, literally, whereas that didn't happen in the GameCube version. Mirrors were another impressive effect in the original Luigi's Mansion, but on the 3DS, they look more like extremely low-res TV screens. However, the floor here is another example of the reworked texture work as the floorboards now run both horizontally and vertically, whereas they were just vertical before. The rug has also been updated with a simpler, flatter design than the GameCube's slightly more intricate and grittier one, probably so it shows up better with the 3DS's reduced resolution. We can see a similar pattern for many of the carpets or rugs in the game, such as in this room. On the GameCube, the carpet had real texture to it, whereas on the 3DS it seems to have been swapped out for a flat red color. Some of the pictures visible in the trailer have also been redrawn or redesigned entirely. The one of a vase and flowers in the bathroom, for instance, has been given a less symmetrical makeover on the 3DS, with a smaller vase and seemingly more flowers. And in the music room, the person playing the instrument here holds it a little bit higher on the 3DS. Besides textures, it seems some of the objects you'll encounter have been modified a bit too. Doorknobs, for instance, actually look more detailed now, with a new bump on the handle. The lights on the dropping chandelier now also have a more intricate design too, resembling a blooming flower. Oh, and even the main body of it has an all-new texture. And speaking of which, the sheet draped over the mirror also has a redesigned look too. 
Oh, and while we're here, the door leading to the next section seems to have lost a metal gate indicating that it's blocked off. And yeah, we checked, that's the case even earlier on too. But we'd be surprised if that doesn't return because it serves an important visual role in the game. So maybe it just hasn't been implemented yet. Now let's take a look at King Boo's room, who we can just barely see right there by the way. His chandelier received a similarly impressive makeover, with the glass enclosures now having an actual design to them. It also seems to cast a more vibrant glow across the room, which better illuminates the lion head statues, which also seem to have been slightly redesigned. And then of course, we have the picturesque plumber himself, Mario. And I mean that literally as he's trapped in the painting. Now in the GameCube version, it almost looks like he's trapped behind stained glass instead. It was a neat effect, but I'm not quite sure if it was the right look for it. Whereas on the 3DS, it seems like they may have figured it out, with it now looking more like an actual painting. You can even see the brush strokes in the background. Interestingly, we can see that the 3DS hides most of the on-screen icons during this scene, such as Luigi's health, whereas in the GameCube version, they stuck around for the entire scene. It's a small but nice improvement. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, Luigi's Mansion is still very much the same game it was before, just with a few small tweaks, additions, and graphical changes. But there is one brand new thing that we haven't mentioned yet. The addition of a boss rush mode, where you'll presumably take on a series of boss fights one after another to finish them as quickly as possible, at least based on the timer we can see in the trailer. Now while the narrator described this mode, the trailer also gave us a first look at the gallery, which appears to be expanded from the GameCube version, now featuring multiple levels connected via staircases. Neat! And with that, that's everything we could dig up on Luigi's Mansion 3DS. But make sure to check out our head-to-head -head if you haven't already to see if you can spot any more differences yourself. And with that, thanks for watching, and make sure to click that subscribe button for more on Luigi's Mansion 3DS and all things Nintendo 2.